Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 118, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. We have with us a very special guest this week, Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Hola. Uh, always great to be here, Anton. Uh, thanks. Uh, hola to you, too. Um, well, Hayden, often I... Um, we have a five-minute tip and then a, a break, but we've been kind of going over a little bit on our tips lately. I have nothing for after the break today. I think we'll get people out today legit in five minutes. I I, I think that's a, a good premise. And uh, But we're sticking around for today's tip because um, uh, we're answering a question I think many people have. Uh, the solution isn't the prettiest, but the question exists. Sometimes you just have to get the job done, right? Uh, for sure. Um, so what is it? What's the question today? So um, I, like many people, um, it, I am sometimes dissatisfied with the UX options made available by the interactive report. So the interactive grid has a whole like JavaScript API that you can use, but with the interactive report, if you want to deviate from the, uh, from the pre-configured UX settings, it can be a little tricky. So specifically, um, I want to be able to uh, expose the uh, alternate default reports in an interactive report outside of the existing drop-down selection menu. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of saved reports and, and having lots of alternative reports, but it's not really evident to, if you know interactive reports and you're a, a power user, it's evident, but it's not always evident uh, that, they're, that they're even there. Um, and so we had a, a requirement like that uh, for a, um, a project here. I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Um, and uh, and um, so um, we had a, a, a project and what we ended up doing was creating two different regions with a region display selector. Um, and, and so it's two different reports with two different regions, even though they have essentially the same comment, content. Right. And, and just to um, repeat my criticism of the interactive report UX, the the uh, alternate default reports made available through that drop down menu at the top there, where it says primary report. And I think it often goes unnoticed. And so exposing that through buttons or tabs or something like that would be great. So I think it's uh, I think it's terrible that you have to have two different reports on the same page that are essentially the same report twice. Like you, I thought this was terrible. So in fact, we did it exactly as I described at first, but we didn't like it. So we changed it. Um, it is actually, now I'm showing you, this really is just one report. Um, so I was a little bit oh, fibbing. Uh, me. With two. <laughs> but uh, but let's, kick, let's kick off the timer and show what, what we did to, to make it one report. Um, and uh, so I'll go ahead and start my timer. Um, so. So the first thing I did in the first place anybody should go is the Apex documentation for JavaScript APIs. I, I knew with the interactive grid, there was an interactive grid widget I could I could use, but I, I, I couldn't find anything. There is an interactive report widget, but I couldn't find anything uh, helpful about it. So It's extremely limited. Yeah, very limited. So I went out, the next step was Google, and I found this blog post by none other than John Snyder's published eight years ago. Um, and he goes through and it says exactly that. In fact, he says, um, as you get into here, he talks about the AIR widget and there's not much you can do with it. That's what his exact words, there's not much you can do with it. But he does something very similar to what we're talking about in this blog post. He's talking about making use of um, the menu item and he talks about how he finds the menu item and so forth. Um, and ultimately he says, you know, it's not supported, but the risk seems reasonable to me. Um, and if John Snyder says the risk is reasonable to him and eight years later, what his approach is still working. Well, like you said, it's not pretty, but it works for me. I mean, eight years is a long time. It seems pretty stable to me. Yeah. So this is what I did. Um, the first thing, and I followed John's, uh, John's guidance. Uh, I actually took a guess, but I wanted to know what this item's um, ID is. And the ID is right here. It's affinity groups IR under saved, underscore saved underscore reports, which is the static region ID, um, the region static ID followed by underscore saved reports. And then the actual values that are on behind these items 
uh, if you if you dig a little bit deeper, are the IDs that are behind it. So um, if I just go to the console, I can actually build this up. All I have to do is set the value of it. So if I come back here, um, if I'm on affinity groups, I can set the value to from affinity groups to the primary report. And then, so that's just a, a, a quick um, jQuery and set where value. Did that, where did that, what is that value? Uh, that value is the underlying ID of this report. Um, where do you think I get that? Uh, the Apex metadata. Yeah, it is. It's the key is the Apex metadata. But the other thing I found that I had to do is I had to um, get this little, um, uh, this, I had to ish, actually issue a change event um, to explicitly make that happen. So that's all these links do. These two links are just those two lines of JavaScript. They set the value and issue a change event. Um, and that's it. Uh, but to your point, I do need to query the Apex metadata. I opted to implement this as a list. So this is a list region. Um, so if I come here, um, and this is my actual list. When you do a list, you have to do these this very specific format. Um, but I queried from the Apex application page IRRPT and the Apex application page regions. Um, and I just use the static, the, the application ID, the page ID. I only want the primary reports and the alternative default reports. And then I'm specifically saying this static ID. If I only had one interactive report on the page, I wouldn't even need this line. This could be a generic. Um, if you only have interact one interactive report, you can put this one on every page and it, it would work. You wouldn't need to even create multiple lists. Um, Perhaps uh, someone may turn this into a plugin. It would be a great region plugin, super easy to do as a region plugin. Um, but for now, what I have done is I published um, this query and all of these steps on my blog, uh, apexdebug.com. And I scheduled it to publish right at 1210. So I don't know if it happened or not. Let's let's take a look. Apexdebug.com. Let's see if it, oh, look, it did. It published. Wow. So there it is. Uh, it's got everything you need to fidget with the Apex Interactive Report widget. Um, and the report, the query is right there. Um, that's well, it. I think many people will be looking to implement this um, because I know we're not the only ones who are, uh, who feel there's something lacking in the interactive report UX for alternative um, saved reports. Yeah, and um, the 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 more I've been using Apex for I don't know twenty plus over twenty years. Um, the, the power of the metadata driven development environment is just it. It, it, it expresses itself time and time again. Um, and this is just another example. Um, on a long running series we have of, of, ex, uh, of exploiting, uh, as you should, the, the metadata available to you. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, that's all I have. We truly got people out. They wasted only a, eight minutes of their vi valuable uh, lunch hour. Um, I things. say let's let them get back to eating their lunch. Yeah. If you like this video, like this video. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good weekend.